hello everybody and welcome to the Linux Lads, the only podcast that uh, gives you a hug while you're in quarantine or some shit, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm, I'm too lazy for these jokes nowadays. Um, as usual, I'm Shane. I'm Connor. And I'm Mike. And Mike's giving us a sexy voice. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as usual, we're the Linux Lads and uh, yeah. Another Wednesday. Here we go. Um, Mike, so <laughs> you used X to go in anger and it was good. Yeah. Please I've, explain. <laughs> it does sound a little bit dodgy, doesn't it? But yeah, don't call, <laughs> don't call the guards just yet. I've, uh, I've never really used remote desktop much because I've never, used, have any, I've never had any use for it. But I needed to connect to my work PC that's sitting in the office and do something that... Uh, basically meant that the PC has to be uh, connected to a website for a uh, long time, let's say 10 hours. And I couldn't do that from my home computer because A, I wanted to shut it down when I when I went somewhere and uh, B, I couldn't rely on the Wi-Fi that it's going to stay up for, t- for, for that duration of time. So I set up X2Go which I've never done before, and it was uh, it was amazingly easy. A bit slow because it's over SSH, but it's uh, it was easy setup. It gave me all that I needed from a remote desktop, and it allows you to run a session, log in, log out as you need. It's always it's always kind of running, and I've been running it on that desktop actually for days now, and I still can log in, and I think it's uh, basically. Uh, my favorite find of the of the lockdown for now. Is that going to be replacing the boner section? The find of the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. No, it sounds a bit too much like the find of the fortnight that uh, they had on uh, that they had on Linux Voice. So we well can't use that for for legal basically, reasons. Basically, I I think that's how the boner section started originally because I actually wanted to uh do something similar like something cool we found every episode and i don't know we settled on boner for some reason oh, because <laughs> it was the it, it was the coolest thing you, you could have done but uh <laughs> um on my end anyway i i dug out uh my old one plus one i was rearranging the office during quarantine you know because i was just trying to stave off insanity and uh i decided to we just me and the girlfriend decided to uh, tidy up the whole house and you know tackle it a room at a time and all that good stuff and we tidied up the office which admittedly is actually way better and much nicer and just a generally nice place to be now so that's cool but like i was going through uh, a big old crate and i found an old one plus one and an old one plus three as well uh, mm. but that was that was actually in worse shape than the one plus one so that's a testament to the the one plus one um the one plus one was in you know, it was worn and torn. It wasn't in perfect condition, but it was fine. And it turned on and it was perfectly functional and everything wasn't slow. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to use it to uh, try out Ubuntu Touch because, um, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, I have I have a OnePlus here, one here. Um, it's dead, like the battery's gone, but like it, it's perfectly functional. It will, it's just not charged. Um, and it's running, that is running uh, Ubuntu Touch. And Ubuntu Touch is of or uh, the One Plus One is officially supported by Ubi Ports, and I believe now the three actually might be as well. But if you say that three has seen better days, and maybe stick with the one, but um, you can yeah. see through the casing and parts. It's so cracked, like it's okay, smashed. it's so cracked. It had so- several meaningful interactions with concrete. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I remember that phone from uh, from when you had when you were, yeah. when you were still using it because you brought it to the to the long stone, which also yeah. had a meaningful interaction with the ground since and no, exists no Whoa. longer. <laughs> oh yeah, oh no, the poor long stone. Ah, uh, um, long stone. Yeah, it's one of the oldest pubs in Ireland, and they fucking knocked it down for more offices. Okay. Um. So anyway, uh, Connor. You also have a OnePlus story. <laughs> Speaking of OnePluses and segways, <laughs> um, my 5T is back. Woo! Uh, it's well, it's 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 been back for a while, but um, the uh, our last episode was 
solely fo- focused on the diva that is Rocco. No, he's not a diva at all. I'm, I'm just giving a dick at him. Um, but because uh, that pretty much took up the entire episode last time, I didn't get a chance to talk about it. But um, I've been. It's been in various stages of being back since I've been. Uh, it's been was back functional and the stock ROM was on it. And I'm like, ooh, this is cool and is stable, but uh, kind of boring. So of course I started flashing other shit on it, but um, I didn't quite go as far as doing um, going to E. I've I discovered. Uh, I think I pretty much discovered what E the problem with E was, and that was the or E slash E or the E Foundation or or EOS or however you want to pronounce it is that the latest um, official version for my phone is Android 9 and the E-ROM, the very latest, in, uh, uh, um, had dev written after it so in other words, it wasn't even a stable, it was like the la- latest bleeding edge version of it I could of EOS for my phone was running, uh, was based off Android 8. So I think what it happened was, I think what I tried to... F- I either tried to flash it, even though there was a nine Android nine firmware on my phone, and I tried to flash an eight ROM on top of a nine firmware, or I tried to downgrade the firmware of my phone so that would be compatible and acceptable for EOS, which was based on Android eight. Basically, completely and utterly fucked up my phone. Like I, everything was corrupted. My the data partition, the system partition, everything. Like um. I think even the recovery partition was corrupted. Um, so, <laughs> like, literally, I, I, I'd I soft break, break, uh, bricked my phone and it was well beyond my capabilities. But um, uh, his name escapes me at the moment. I mean, the, the handle that he goes by, but it's the the PowerShell on Linux guy. Um, he's, uh, he's on Twitter. Um, he reached out to me on Twitter and said, uh, since I was mentioning it, and said, hey, I... I fairly um, knowledgeable with the 5T who which one of you guys was having trouble with the 5T and I said me and he said oh uh, DM me and uh, we had a DM conversation and then he literally one evening on Discord spent a, a couple of hours I'm not even exaggerating about two or three hours like help helping me through it and uh, we we had setbacks and then he said okay well we'll start from scratch and we'll, we'll like he was very patient so Thank you. I just um, name escapes me at the moment, and it's, it's uh, whatever um, handle that he goes by. But um, it's the PowerShell on Linux guy, and he is in our oh, um, yeah, yeah. he is in our yeah. Telegram chat because on the basis of 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 uh, that conversation we had, I mentioned that we're on Telegram, and then he had, he joined into our Telegram chat group um, because of that. Uh, thoroughly nice guy. Um, so uh, kudos to him. Um, that's extremely nice. Yeah, yeah, like f- yeah, that's uh, fair play to him. Honestly, fair play to him. And um, that's the great thing about all this, isn't it? It's like you always find people like that who will do mad things like that. Like Rose will spend hours helping you with a problem. Um, because I'd pretty much given up on my phone. I mean, I was getting to a stage where I had switched over to my work phone, which is a Samsung Galaxy something or other. Um, which is perfectly fine, perfectly functional, and is dual SIM as well. So I could have had my, I have my, per, could have had my um, personal and did personal and and work number, uh, or work SIM cards in the same phone. It's just that uh, the Samsung UI and the way Samsung, do, the way Samsung, um, con, um, customizes Android just makes sickens me. Yeah, it just <laughs> it, 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 it it just makes Android. It hurts my brain. It makes Android worse for me. Um. Uh, it's it's going in the it's it's prob they're what they're probably doing is they're probably trying to make it more friendly for people who switch over from iOS, but I'm like, no. But if I wanted iOS, then I would have had an iPhone. <laughs> I want Android oh, to be Android. Damn it! <laughs> seriously, fuck Samsung's implementation of Android. Fuck <laughs> it. It's t- no, I hate it so much. I it, like the, the, it's the reason I stopped buying Samsung phones. It's oh, I hate it. Uh, it's, but it's uh it's like oh great do i want two fucking apps of everything the samsung version and the yes. android version yeah that, that i mean oh, um shite. uh to give you an idea it's the oh uh yeah we have um samsung calendar we have samsung contacts and everything like that i'm like 
okay, fine, you you're 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 writing your own apps, yada yada yada. I'm like, but at least have them all in one store. No. Then, then no, there's we're going to split them across two stores because yeah. why not? <laughs> then there's the Samsung store. And what do you think the all the Samsung apps do? They upgrade to the Samsung store. They don't upgrade to the Play Store. So the, you'll get a notification from the Play Store saying, hey, you have five uh, uh, apps that are, that have updates. Do you want to update? I'm like, yeah, yeah, fine. Click. Okay, uh, that's that's in the in the background. Then independently, the Samsung store will say, "Hey, we have updates too." I'm like, "Fuck off!" <laughs> <laughs> does it does it still do this? Is it is it still like that? Because I thought, okay, that, I thought I would have thought that this was some kind of an old behavior that they that they a long since uh, decided to ask you in say in like in favor of something the, more the, reasonable. The, the, I mean, my my work work phone is a fairly up to date modern phone. Like it's, I think it was released in 2019. So yes, they very much still do this. That's annoying. No kidding. Some of the some of the Samsung phones are more expensive than uh, than iPhones, and one would expect that I, I, uh, you get a decent service. Well, I did get a enjoy. Decent like experience I had a couple of Samsung it. Galaxy S's, and they were all right. Like I, I, they were good phones for for what for the day. Like they were one of the better better ones if you didn't want an iPhone, basically. And you wanted a good Android phone. Uh, a Galaxy was probably the the one you got. But like, I don't know. For me, um, I would just like as soon as I learned how to do it, I would just wipe the 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 Samsung shit, and I would just put stock Android on it every time, or say Anagen Mod for a little while. I mean, I the people are saying like, yeah, oh yeah, the um. You can post things like Nova Launcher and everything, and uh, yeah, fine. You can you can you can um, make it more sane, but the, you'll occasionally get reminded of the fact that yes, it still is a um, a Samsung device, and uh, yeah, um, the I I don't even think it had a Bigsby button, but big, yeah, the Bigsby notifications. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I can't. It's as annoying as freaking Cortana for Windows. It's like the Bigs B for for on Samsung phones. It's like, yeah. I mean, the uh, Google Assistant is at least freaking competent. It's at least useful. I I get the privacy concerns and I get that the fact that like I'm like sure it's useful, but don't you realize that you're giving all your data to Google? I get that, and then I can make the decision of. Okay, it's very useful and is is very well written and everything like that. But I choose not to use it because of the privacy concerns. Um, Bixby has both the privacy concerns and the fact that it's a shit app. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think I think we'll move on to the news. On the, um, so. Uh, <laughs> So uh, the first bit of news there, actually, something I read, I ha- I got a little wry, nostalgic smile reading this. It was very, uh, very good news that the uh, the old Hardy Heron wallpaper is back. And I got to say, I forgot I even knew about this wallpaper. And then I read this and I was like, oh, yeah, that wallpaper. And, <laughs> and I just kind of, yeah, I don't know. It filled me with a little bit of joy. Um, have, have you guys, do you guys ever use Hardy Heron? Do you remember this at all? Uh, oh yeah, I remember this from back in the day. Yeah, this was the first time I seriously started using Linux, and uh, I I am very familiar with that uh, brown background with the with the colorful <laughs> bird on it, and with that sound that came with it. Like you know, do you remember when you turned on eight oh four, and and it did it did some kind of a variation on the on the you know Dolby swoosh or something similar I don't I, can't, I don't recall the sound exactly but it did it did, it did have a startup sound yeah and that that does fill me with nostalgia uh, so this this wallpaper is going to be part of the 2004 uh, ISO that it's been remastered by Martin Wimpress from the original SVG as they write on OMG Ubuntu and uh, I think that's amazing because it lets you realize how long has uh, this been uh, how long has uh, has it been since uh, at first we started with Linux because most of us have I think all of us have actually used uh, 804 didn't we um yeah I have yeah and, and for me I actually made it work like I I had a bit of freedom in the office as for what what 
what uh, gear I used, and uh, I actually managed to be for about uh, two years. I managed to be on Linux uh, in the office, and 804 is, was where it was started. So you know, there's been some very painful times when I couldn't get the Wi-Fi work, and I had to run a very long LAN cable from the router. But uh, and, yes, and this wrapper. <laughs> yes. <Remember that. laughs> And uh, was called the what? And the and the and the and wrapper. Yeah, I I, I don't always called it Endis wrapper for some reason. Um, yeah, it sounds a bit like disruptor, like a Klingon weapon. It was it was that thing to get your Wi-Fi working, and that way it was the only thing that worked with certain Wi-Fi interfaces, or I don't know, hardware. You know, Wi-Fi devices. It sounds sounds like something from Jurassic Park. It's a Wi-Fi disruptor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't think right now. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. It was basically yeah because some Wi-Fi cards or e network cards had like these weird proprietary drivers, and and this was a way to get it working, right? Mm -hmm. Am yeah, I wrong? I, Stop being yeah, silent. I, I, I honestly can't remember what what it was called. It I, I stick out of my mind that much. I remember some kind of a GUI that was like WICTL or something like that. That uh, that basically you oh, replaced yeah. your normal Wi-Fi GUI with, and it was meant to work better. And yeah, but I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the new uh, the new Harley Heron on uh, on the new ISO to 2004. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, God, that's a long time ago. Anyway. <laughs> The, so, uh, oh, yeah, QT might get forked because the QT company might choose to restrict new releases to paying customers for 12 months before open sourcing them. Shocking news. Shocking. Well, they deny it. I mean, they kind of denied it. They uh, So QT is QT, the Qt company is the company behind the QT framework uh, for the C++ language. That is basically what uh, KDE and some other desktop environments and a lot of apps in the open source world are made out of, right? So it it uh, gives you it gives the developers uh, a lot of really nice tools to work with, uh, and it allows for a reasonably rapid uh, uh, creation of applications. And uh, the people who own it, the cute cute company, are obviously a commercial entity, and as everybody else, they need to f they they have to think about making money, and they've had in the past a quite a strenuous at times relationship with the open source projects. Uh, you know, they they make money by selling the same thing that is kind of available for free. Obviously, if you pay money, you can you can license it in every, you can license your product in any which way you want to, and you can do some. You can link it in a different way, uh, whereas in some certain in certain circumstances, if you use Qt and you use the open source version of you, if you don't pay them for it, you have to release it under the GPL. I think uh, there are some very complicated licensing issues with them as well, and they uh, so there is this uh, news or this information started by a KDE developer that they are going to basically only open source the stuff after it's been out for the commercial customers for 12 months. That ob obviously immediately sparked news of uh, people wanted to fork this again because people in the past wanted to fork Qt because for similar reasons. And uh, they came out with a very, very, very short blog post saying uh, that uh, this is uh, not uh, what uh, uh, they, they worded it in a specific a specific way they basically say that they are committed to the customers open source and the qt governance model so we don't know what's going to happen but the strenuous relationship in that is not good because it kind of makes uh, kd and other projects think to think about their future and it's not great for stability and uh, uh yeah So, new GNOME mobile shell mockups tease a tactile future on tablets. That was like an, a rhyme. Who wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, the um, Joey from OMG Ubuntu, to be specific, <laughs> because it, it's it's directly his, his article or the headline from his article. But um, so, on the basis of uh, Fosh, which is the more touch screen friendly version of gnome that um that uh that 
um, the people in Purism and the, I'm sure a few other developers are are developing. Um, um, so some renders of a touchscreen friendly, um, but larger, um, uh, variation for but well, let's say a large tablet or something like that, um, are up on OMG Ubuntu, and it looks quite interesting. Um, and one of the the um criticisms of uh the gnome shell uh, in the er- in the early days and uh, gnome 3 was that uh that it was geared toward touch screens and it was m- more of a touch screen um ui which they're <laughs> i think they're very much stringent um kind of denying and stringently denying at the moment but um this seems to be a a kind of a mock up from uh I think one of the guys over in Purism, I think one of the designers in, in Purism, and he says, okay, this is a mock-up of how GNOME would look like if it was touch-centric, um, using some of his design cues or design ideas from the Fosh project for the uh, more phone size screens. So he's he's pretty much just blowing it up and making it more tablet-friendly, I suppose. Yeah, I mean... I've always expected that that uh, all these uh, desktop environments would would and should uh, embrace mobile, but um, yeah, I don't know. With the convergence thing in particular, it's just like yeah, I don't care about that anymore. Um, I just yeah, I just want Linux on a tablet. That's my my desire in life, and I will get it very soon. I know it. Um, from my. Uh, viewing of these screenshots and also any demonstrations I've seen of Fosh running on uh, both the the Librem phone and also uh, the Pine phone because um, different projects such as uh, you can get different backends like you can get um, Postmarket OS uh, running Fosh you can get I think even Debian um, running Fosh on on the um, Pine phone um, it's it seems to be well designed and fair play to them for for m- managing to do that to get the no maps and everything like that all kind of uh, touch screen and small small touch screen friendly at that. Um, if if this is what they can go up, come up with, then they probably should have put all their resources into this and rather than splitting their resources between this and the hardware of making the phone itself, which um. Anyway, uh, without getting into that, so we all know m- what my views are in, in, on that point of view. But um, yeah, um, seems to be that the, they do have talent and they have talented developers and talented designers. So they probably should have put all their eggs in this basket. But um, who knows what they'll do in the future. Um, but th- this does seem to be quite well designed. It's hard to sell a Fosh for $2,000 a piece, you know. <laughs> hey. <laughs> And that's why you can get it on the Pine phone for a hundred and fifty dollars. Hey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, next up, the best ebook reader app for Linux just got even better, Connor. So uh, this time I was having a look around. So the idea of of reading an ebook on your desktop, um, not not a lot of people might think would be. Um, very exciting or something like that but um some of these um ebook uh, reader apps um have uh things like highlighting and and you can change things around and and also a kind of a distraction free mode as well so if you want to have your rich experience and with the highlighting and maybe being able to click on the links and being able to look things up as you, as you're reading something, maybe it's a technical manual or or it's a it's a it's a manual on it's a ebook on on coding or or um and something like that. You could be trying trying to learn programming and coding while you're reading along, and you want to click on the ex, the example links within the ebook, or there's a distraction free mode. If you just if you're sitting down in front of a novel and you just literally want to read and then click through, then there's that um kind of a zen moment that you can have. Um, I myself I'm not a massive ebook reader, but I can certainly see th- um how some people are. Um, I don't own a uh, an ebook and uh, e paper display um traditional um ebook reader. Um, 
the idea has, certainly has intrigued me in the past. Um, one thing I would say is if they ever come out with a colour screen version of it, because then I could read the novels and the ebooks, but I could also ring, read um, colourful comics on it as well. I mean, I know you can read um, comics on, on, the re- on the regular ones, but the fact that they're um, grayscale and black and white, there, you know, there's something that's just extra about the the color gamut of that you when you're kind of looking at comics. So if they come out with a color ebook uh, reader, um, that is something thing that I definitely may have to purchase uh, because it'll be the best in best in both worlds. And to people who still say get an Android tablet or something like that, I'm like, yeah, I I like the the additional functionality of uh of the the. I like the technology of the e-paper display and the long battery life tech, um, that it can come with. So if you can have those benefits as well as being a comic book reader, then I could be on board. Yeah, I look, I like the look of it. Like I looked at screenshots and there's a nice little gif on that article, especially. Um, but I did have a look at it and it is nice. Um, uh, I didn't actually even realize like when I, the first thing when I, when I saw, the kind of run the features of this app i was like the first thing i thought was something you actually said then i was like uh well if you have coding books or technical books or uh, you know books that were were being able to copy and paste would actually be really handy and you know follow links and go back to different bits or choose your own adventure novel either or and uh, (laughs) um but uh yeah like i was i was just yeah i never even thought of that like and it actually looks really lovely it looks nice it's a very nice way of presenting a page on a on a screen like it just looks very lovely you know to to find out if he was eaten by the dragon go to page 223 <laughs> <laughs> click <laughs> nice um so anyway i think we'll move on that is a cool app though i'm probably going to download that that looks really cool um so next up uh linux distro alert whoop 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 uh the deepin 20 beta is finally available i have never used deep deepin so i can't be that excited about this deepin is always had something that i'm like it looks as pretty as fuck i mean it's the it's something about it is just it's so well designed i just it's it's and it's as el- well designed as elementary, but kind of going in a in a different direction. Like they take design as seriously as, as elementary does. It's just um, el- elementary um, just reminds me too much of the uh, the Mac OS usage paradigm. So I, I didn't really find myself go- um, going in the elementary direction. But this um, you can customize it. So yeah, you, you can have your panel at the bottom on your traditional windows layout and you can also have your um mac os type layout as well if you if you if you choose um and it's a certain certainly it's a, a great um desktop environment in fact um there's a uh a, a community respin of ubuntu called ubuntu dde which is the deep deep in desktop environment and so you can have your ubuntu 2004 um and deepen cake and eat it as well um so yeah so it's it's certainly something that um it's something to check out um and uh i have seen a video demonstration of this um ubuntu dde the um community respin of it and they said for people whose concern about deepen was that um the the Deepin store was using a, um, a Chinese server for its metrics. Well, um, they say rest assured because um, the deep not only does is, is none of these um, none of the metrics are going um, to Chinese um, servers. If that is what your paranoia or your tinfoil, tinfoil hat is telling you, it's a bad thing. Um, it's all going through the regular Ubuntu servers, and in fact the Deepin store doesn't even exist uh, on in this Deepin uh, desktop environment or Deepin uh, Deepin uh, Ubuntu DDE um, is because it has the Ubuntu store. So every, all your your normal Ubuntu 
um, workflow and paradigm is there, except it's the deep in desktop environment. So if you fancy a bit of deep in desktop environment, um, but like your tw Ubuntu twenty o four base, then maybe check out um, Ubuntu DDE. Well, props to the uh, deep in developers because they are based in Wuhan in China, so they've Ooh. been through something right now, and they still managed to get the, the beta out. So yeah, good on they. them. Yeah, that's mad. I just noticed that as well. It's crazy. Um, uh, so, meet the lightest Linux laptop ever from S S System76. Well, I shouldn't say ever. That's probably uh, wrong. Um, but uh, the lightest Linux laptop from S System76. The lightest laptop ever, ever, ever. <laughs> uh, the Lemur Pro, or how do they call it? They are all named after some kind of animals aren't they um but yeah this looks lovely system 76 uh they do only linux laptops as far as i know and linux desktops they have some really lovely lap uh, desktops and um, this new uh 0.99 kg so that's 0 0.99 kg uh Limur pro at 14.1 inch is you know that really looks like a real classy machine uh, if i was in the market for a laptop i'd be considering it apparently you can do 21 hours on the battery you can do 21 hours for coding with vim i mean who needs anything else from a computer really? <laughs> <laughs> i mean i like the only issue i don't like uh i like light um laptops no, actually, that's a total lie. I actually don't mind. I actually quite like my laptops to be a little bit heavy. Um, I don't know. I just I like I associate quality with heaviness when it comes to te technology. I, th I think if you can plug it in and it's heavy, it must be good. So um, it's it's a terrible way to buy things, but yeah. But the uh, so with this though, the issue with those small laptops or light laptops or thin ones of any description is that the IO is always terrible. So like you need like a million dongles and extensions and, and stuff like that. I don't think that's the case here. You see, I I'm looking at the picture and I can see obviously bottle connector for power and then HDMI and then the blue uh, USB port and probably what is USB C and that's just the one side of it. So I assume I can actually, we can actually, uh, Control plus, control plus. Do do do, do, do a research. Uh, it has. And it has. <laughs> it um, I'm, the text I'm, bigger, but not the pi fucking picture. What the hell? <laughs> um, I just clicked through to their website, and uh, they do have some more um, shots of it and clear shots. Anyway, so yeah, it it is a barrel connector that is a full size HDMI that is a full um, USB three um with the blue connector as he said and that does look like that is a usb type c on um, yes, one side on so there is in total they have uh usb c uh one times and two usb three ports a micro oh, yeah. sd card reader uh it's 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 very well endowed with all of these uh with all of these uh ports so that i don't think it would be a problem um it can it can have up to 40 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, uh, two M.2 SSDs up to four terabytes. Uh, it's uh, the only thing that it's missing uh, for me is a dedicated graphics card because it runs on Intel UHD graphics. So that's the only thing that I uh, uh, I like in a laptop is a dedicated graphics card. 40 gigabytes of, of RAM. I mean, you can yeah. literally install your OS in RAM. <laughs> yeah, I mean, several times over, right? But uh, it it is a really nice design as well. And it's not too expensive. I mean, it's uh, almost $1,100, which after, if you had it shipped to Europe, it probably uh, would climb up considerably, consider, considerably. I don't know what the taxes on these things are, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, and before um, ultra nerds in the audience start emailing in and saying, oh, you you could run OSs in RAM before. Yes, I am aware of Puppy Linux, <laughs> yeah, where you can <laughs> you can run it in, in whatever, um, um, between 500 and 
500 megs and one gig of ram will probably could probably run it in 256 uh, megs of ram um and there's also debian dock which is the debian version of of puppy linux the more you know anyway um <laughs> uh, and yes i've tried out both of those and they're they're both uh, really interesting um but it's just you could run regular uh full um desktop linux in ram with your 40 gigabytes of ram is what i was getting at so your 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 um full blown KDE with all the fancy hotness, and you can run you probably run that in well yeah twenty or thirty gigabytes but yeah, just the figure stood stood out to me when I saw the forty gigabytes. I was like holy shit. <laughs> oh, that's not that uncommon though. I have uh, uh thirty two, which is uh, not which is. Uh, really I have good. um um an ordinary amount of sixteen gigs. Not that that that's that ordinary. I mean, my laptop is eight. No, you can you can run Linux really well on eight. Uh, I think uh, so. I think, but it's it's getting more common. You can, I think, uh, maybe next year thirty two is big on us because right now sixteen is the kind of thing that if you were buying a, a new laptop, I don't think you'd go for less than sixteen. Maybe next year is going to be six uh, thirty two. Uh, gigabytes of memory I know that you can still buy like a 4 gig uh, 4 gig Acer in a PC world but uh, that's not the kind of machines that I uh, we, most people, most, most Linux people would buy it's not the kind of machines I'd be associating with now <laughs> but, before we get um, too confused between me saying um, what, how much RAM Linux needs to run uh, I meant run the entire operating system in RAM exclusively. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just uh, like yeah, four. Just keep it, uh, it'll be keep like it it'll be like running. It'll be like running Kubuntu on a four four gigabyte hard drive. I'm just saying that that's the amount of storage you'd need. But anyway, that's the, the, all the point that I was making. Um, well, that's the that's the thing. Like with the, I don't know if any people probably already know this, but so it's probably not that interesting. But like the like. Uh, Someone told me in college that it's like Google are able to have such fast search results because they cache everything in RAM, like literally everything. And I was like, fucking hell, how much RAM is that? And <laughs> what's the power bill? Um, I don't know what everything means, but they cache, they cache everything in RAM. And that's how they're able to uh, serve up search results so quickly. Um, that could be an old hat trick. I mean... I went to college a few years back, so I don't know. I'm sure it is. I mean, I think that that's all of thing was the um, Google's. What they did was they at the very beginning is they bought everyone else's old discarded hardware that nobody wanted, and then the their software was just so optimized and so efficient that they using old hardware that they bought for cheap. Um, but just like multitasking, in other words, rather than having one ultra powerful um server, they had maybe five or six really shitty servers. But those five or six really shitty servers kind of added up to being as good as, if not better, it's, than the one. Yeah, they old, squeezed old. every penny yeah. out of those servers. Um, which I'd love to do if I had the room. I'd love to buy up a whole lot of old networking gear and just go to town just get real down and dirty you know <laughs> just get on like just wrap myself in ethernet cable for about a week <laughs> a whole weekend um i don't know why i just love I'm, networking i'm, I'm, I'm sure there's there's members of members of our audience who pay to see that <laughs> i certainly hope not um, <laughs> Uh, oh, this has taken a turn, then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I did have a, I did have an idea during quarantine in the house. I thought this, this house is like uh, data connectivity and stuff is very terrible, and I, I had the idea of running like, uh, like the junction box with the with the bloody phone line outside is is terrible. Like, and the DSL is always dropping out. It's shite. So I wanted to replace all that stuff myself. And have like a fucking central server under the stairs, and basically everyone just remotes into a session on that server, and nobody has a computer in the house anymore. 
I think Linus Tech Tips did something like that before, but yeah, it's ambitious, but someday, someday. <laughs> Just when you're saying that, I was thinking <laughs> Linux Lads erotic card ca- calendar coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> I think that we lost, now that we lost all, everyone. Like... <laughs> hey, sex sells, okay? Yeah, but this doesn't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Just, boy. Shane, Shane saying that he's going to wrap himself up in Ethernet cables. <laughs> hey, not like that. <laughs> I meant, God, uh, uh, I'm, I'm I just, meant, I'm, I'm in giddy. I did, I did not mean in an erotic fashion. I just meant I will have a lot of his Ethernet cables are about me, because uh, I'll be working with them, doing entirely non-sexual things, and they will just get wrapped around me because I'll just be so busy and involved in the work that I'm doing. All right. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> so anyway. Do um, we have anything to move on to? <laughs> <laughs> Do we ever? Do we ever? Do we ever? Um, so shout outs. Um, so we've only got one shout uh, out. As <laughs> as some of you may or may not know, uh, Joe Ressington, friend of the show of Late Night Linux and Linux Academy, etc. fame, um, got... Uh, got kind of uh, I don't I don't I don't want to say fired but I just said it so fuck it he got fired um so obviously he's uh he's kind of probably uh you know wondering about money and stuff so you know maybe help him out listen to his podcast maybe have a look at his patreon um he helped us out a lot at the start so we're basically just saying hey help help him out please no, um, I'd just like to echo that sentiment. I mean, Joe is a an absolute star of of the um, Linux podcast community. He has high standards, but though, um, and he certainly did, um, ball break us in the in the I think at the beginning. But that, that those high standards uh, ultimately, um, allows us to to raise our collective um. Uh, quality and co- cause us to to push ourselves and so he kind of drove us in a direction and we're we're uh, thankful for that um he's a genuinely nice guy any time that we've met up with him in person f- both for the uh the Fostock live and um also any time that we bumped into him at our camp um he was always up for having a chat having a, a couple of beers um and chilling and uh yeah um very very uh uh down to earth stalwart guy so uh it's shocking news that he um found out the the um that he was no longer being employed by them but these things move on um hopefully he's able to find um something to uh in the podcasting realm that is able to occupy his his uh his talents in the future and uh, i'm sure he will i'm sure he will bounce back from from this but if you guys listening to this are fans of the um late night linux podcast and anything that joe resington does and uh, feel free to go over to his um patreon and throw him a couple of books uh, everything helps and i'm sure he'd be very much appreciated appreciative yeah. of it yeah absolutely i can add my voice to this uh Late Night Linux is one of my most favorite podcasts and uh, User Error was, unfortunately now, uh, one of my most favorite podcasts, but I hear that uh, uh, I think on the latest Late Night, Late Night Linux uh, Joe said that he might be doing something with uh, Dan and uh, Dan and Alan Pope again, so that would be amazing. Uh, and yeah, as, as my uh, colleagues here said, um, uh, patreon.com slash late night linux uh if you want to show uh joe and uh and the podcast and uh, your appreciation i'm not your fucking colleague um. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, i was i was going to pause there and say and my uh, colleagues uh but you know it was Hey, we don't get paid man so we're not colleagues <laughs> but, okay so what are we then comrades or Lil- linuxlads.com forward slash support um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but yeah anyway uh, not to beat a dead horse but Joe thanks for texting me and telling me how shit at edi- editing I am 
<laughs> it made me a better person. He has no genuinely. He he took that to heart and it drove him. And um, we, yeah, as you list your listeners will be able to tell from the the editing of this podcast, wink. Um, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> um, Shane standards has has gotten a lot better, and we've all we've all learned lessons as we've been doing the podcast. We've all learned lessons about how to do a better podcast. So we've all got better um, as we've been picking up little tips and tricks um, here there and. Certainly, uh, a lion's share of them have come from Joe Rissington's direction. So, fair play to you, Joe. And just as Mike was was saying that, I did see that rumor on Twitter. Uh, I think it was Dan tweeted out and said, "If we were to do something that is not uh, user error, what would we call it?" And not user error. So, um, I error think they're looking... user. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I I think they they kind of heavily hinted at. They were going to continue with the three of them, but they're just going off um, independently using their own thing. I said, so something that is very much not user error. But if we were to do a thing, what would we call it? And that would be the greatest Easter resurrection. (laughs) Hey, hey. So next up, events. There are none because there are no events. Next. (laughs) Thank you, COVID-19. Nothing is happening anywhere. So... uh, Next, uh, what have we got? Socials. Um, you know the drill. Uh, LinuxLads.com forward slash Telegram forward slash Mastodon at LinuxLads on Twitter. Show at LinuxLads.com. Why am I speaking like this? Um, the tele... <laughs> uh, there, there's always one I missed, though. I think it's... No, I said Mastodon. No, you you have all of them, I okay, think. Okay, good, good. Um, anyway, uh, the linuxlikes.com has all our details and uh, that's really all you need. Yeah, well, when you're giving um, Joe a fiver, give us a fiver too. Please, thank you. <laughs> yeah, linuxlikes.com slash beer. Yeah, sl- or slash support, you know, if you want to give us some money. But, you know, since we're going to have a depression and all that, that's probably less likely than it ever was. Um <laughs> anyway, on that note, <laughs> yeah, on that thanks for lifting note. the spirits. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we're the Linux lads. Uh, I've been Shane. I've been Connor, and I've been Mike. <laughs> See ya. Bye.